the sticker we're going to talk about this time is this Bones Ripper. This is the Bones Ripper. Um, this is a big one, you guys. This is our first Pal Peralta sticker we're talking about. This is the Bones Ripper. It's, I don't know, man. It's a legend. This image is a legend. It was drawn by Victor Cortland Johnson, VCJ, who did all the crazy PAL graphics. He did, you know, all the 80s PAL imagery up until Cliver took over. This is for Bones Wheels. That's why it doesn't say PAL Peralta, it says PAL, because Bones Wheels, I believe, predates when Stacy Peralta became half of the company. This sticker's from 1984. It's clear, it has red, black, white, you could call that gold or bronze color, so we're at four colors. When I saw this image for the first time, it fucked me up. It messed me up. I didn't get it. I didn't understand how you could make this. I didn't understand how you could draw this. I was thinking about what style this is. And just in the fact that the skeleton is like emerging from nothing and coming at you. It's basically trompe l'oeil. Trompe l'oeil is a style of painting uh, invented in France by a guy named Louis Leopold Boilly. And it's like, a, the style basically means deceive your eye. It's like a trick. It's like a visual trick. But this ripping through whatever you put it on, to me was so crazy. I'm seven when I see this, if I see it at that time. It was like when I first learned how to draw a crack in a wall and then you put a brick pattern underneath it so it looks like there's bricks underneath whatever you draw so like i i got a ballpoint pen and i drew a broken brick pattern on my pants because i had like light colored jeans or something and i drew like a brick pattern so it looked like oh my god my jeans broke but there's brick underneath it and i thought i was the coolest person in the world I father was not pleased he was like you ruined your jeans and i was like wrong i made him a lot cooler i was wrong he was right but this image is that where you're just like well, if you put it on wood it looks like the skeleton's coming out of wood if you put it on your car it looks like the skeleton's coming out of your honda civic i read a little thing about it and according to vcj he was inspired by the mgm lion if you've ever seen that it pops out and it roars. <laughs> Very famous. It never occurred to me that that may be where he thought of this. But what a fantastic thought that he was just a kid watching old movies and that lion is what came to him and he was sitting drawing and wherever he was drawing and he had to come up with something and this is what he came up with. He was like, what's a cool version of the MGM lion or like a, a darker version or... I don't want to say deathy because here's the thing. When I look at this skeleton, this to me doesn't give me that feeling of like death and like kind of Satanism and dismemberment and kind of gothy feeling like you get from other stuff from even the same time or like after that, like you pus head and people like that. This feels almost like, like scientific or botanical in a weird way. There's nothing super stylish about this skeleton. It's just he's presenting skeleton. And he said, there's a little quote in what I read, that he thinks of like, he liked skeletons cause they're like, if without them, we'd just be like these piles of mush. One of the reasons I think this particular sticker works so well is this font, this typeface for bones. Because this typeface could not be less this, do you know what I'm saying? This is the most like dry, cold, super smooth machine looking typeface logo I've ever seen. Like, it's so, like, machiney. I don't even know what, it doesn't say bones to me at all, except that it spells bones, but like, it's the opposite of this. And usually, especially around that time, if you had like a skull imagery type deathy thing, the type would be in the same style. And this, this isn't that. These two things are diametrically opposed kind of stylistically. And I think that's because George Powell was product designer. Okay, so he didn't think in terms of like art or uh, even illustration style or things being like gnarly or like appealing to kids. He was a product designer and this type is so product designer. It's just super sleek and 
too smooth, kind of. It's overly smooth. The fact that it says bones and is that smooth doesn't make any damn sense. But that, it's the contrast of that style against this style that is so great. Because you have all these really interesting lines that VCJ got because he did it in Scratchboard versus this line that never changes. It's the same width all the way around. The, the typeface is the same width basically all the way around. It is styleless, except the fact that it's kind of rounded. And it's them against each other that is so rad to me. This image is about, it's the, in skateboarding, there are like a small number of truly famous images that kind of say all there is to know about skateboarding. They tell you everything about skateboard visuals. The Dogtown Cross, this, the Screaming Hand. I own it in many forms. Uh, I have this sticker and this sticker both uh they were eight dollars a piece uh they're a foot by a foot they're super worth it uh i got them at local skate shop kingswell also this graphic is endlessly parodied the bones ripper is parodied by probably every skate company in the world at one point does a parody of the bones ripper see what i'm saying everyone does it because it works great this is a fantastic parody uh, using Mickey Mouse for my local skate shop, Kingswell. Great skate shop. If you're in Los Feliz, go by. People get it tattooed on their bodies. There's just something about it that says everything you want to say as a young person who's learning to skateboard and stuff. It's just like, here I come. There's something, the eyes are creepy. They're just like, Zuh. like they're not, they're not threatening, but they're not not threatening. It's a surprise. It's like, hello. It just jumps out and it says, Hi, like this is not the face. This is not a face you want to see going, hello, hi, what's up? Hey, it's me. You busy? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, do you want to do something? Do you want to talk? Do you want to go get someplace? Do you want to go somewhere? You want to go maybe get some food or get something to drink or what are you doing later? Hey, where are you going? Do you need a ride? Not good. You don't get more famous than this in skateboard imagery. You just don't. This shit was intimidating to me because I couldn't understand a skull's fine, but the fact that he gets the spine going down also, clavicle, clavicle, spine, back of the rib cage. No one ever draws the back of a rib cage. You at the most see the front of a rib cage. Someone drawing the back of the rib cage from the inside, pretty damn rare. Fingers, great. This, it's red, and so you think to yourself, blood and flesh ripping it open, but not necessarily. It's also just nice and red. It could be like a curtain. Maybe he just broke through your curtain, not your body. He could just be coming through your curtain and not, you know, your sternum. The eyes are perfect. They're these perfect circles. That's, I think, a big part of what makes this upsetting looking is how perfect those eyes are. Before this, it's not like there weren't skulls out there. Grateful Dead, things like that. But once this popped up, Let's do the white one. This clear one. Once this the guy came on the scene, there was a new skull in town. Do you know what I'm saying? And like, people saw it. And after this, all skulls, I think, after this got judged against this. If you're drawing a skull and you want it to look cool, there's a few skulls in history that you have to compete with. And this is one of them. This might be the main one. This might be the main skull you have to compete with when you're thinking, I'm gonna draw a sweet skull in black and white and use black lines. It's like, okay, but just so you know, someone did it already and they did it real good. Buy a lot of ink. Do a sketch first, don't rush. I wish I could meet VCJ just to be like, hey man, what the fuck? The Bones Ripper. This is 35 years old. This sticker is 35 years old and it looks fantastic. These stickers hold up. I don't know what this cost. I think I got it in a group of stickers. I think I bought like a grouping or traded a grouping. This may have been a trade I did for a drawing, but I got this in a grouping, I think. And man, it is good. This, this, this gold is still shiny. Hopefully you can tell. And I get endless amounts of enjoyment staring at this guy. Yep. 
awesome. Big fan. Uh, this will not be our last Pal Peralta sticker, duh, as you can see. Uh, but that is why this one is truly one of my favorite and Earth's favorite stickers.